All right, so at this point, what happens is I've logged into a home screen. The passwords do match. It goes to the home screen. The footer changes to be the current user's email. Well, this was in the event that the passwords matched. If I'm trying to put in a password that doesn't match, we need to deal with that because at the moment, it just gives some console output. Put the wrong password, something has to happen there. That'll be comparatively a little bit easier. We've got those pop-ups. Those pop-ups that give you the feedback that say, you know, incorrect password. If you go back to our code, in the <laughs> else block, passwords do not match. I want to um, make those pop-ups appear. You can save a little bit of effort by copying this previous one and then just changing the details. That might be a better way to do it. So I'm going to copy all of that from the pop-ups that previously worked, initiate the pop-up and open the pop-up. I'll copy that and paste it into the else. Now I've got to change the IDs here now. These are something else, whatever we call them, pop, login, mismatch or something? What did we call them? In the login, incorrect, pop, login, incorrect. The rest of that is the same. It's got the pop-up method, it's got then the open, uh, parameter and how do we open it. So that should pop up the error for incorrect password. I also want to clear their I want to clear the box where they're typing in the wrong password. Uh, that'll help people type the right password because now you have an empty box of their password. Next line, we will reference the L, the element of the password. So L in password login, not the temp one. By the time it gets to temp, val in password. It's just the value of what they've typed into the, the box. This is targeting the box, the input box. Right up here, when we created the variable, we have an element that references the whole input box. Then we've got an element that references only the value dot val to uppercase. So here I'm backing up to the input box itself, and I'm set, and this time I'm going to set the val. We can use val to read the val, and we can use val to set the value. Quotes with nothing in between. We did that previously. This clears out, this sets the value to empty of that element where they're trying to type a password. Wrong password, pop up pops up, and the password box gets cleaned out so they can try again. Save it and run it to test it. Put in, a, put in an obviously wrong password. put in a wrong password so that then we can trigger that. Let's see, so I'll refresh. I'm going to do AA but with wrong password. Click go. Wrong password. So I'm trying to log in with an account that does exist put the wrong password, pop-up says wrong password, and the box gets cleaned out. And my console output is also giving me that feedback. First of all, the user does exist, but then the passwords do not match. Put in the right password, passwords match, and I'm in the home screen.
uh, new line before the end of the function. So this is after the else of checking password. This is after the end of else of checking user existence. This is before the end of the function. One more console output like I did with the whole signup system. Remember in the signup system we had one final console output that says this function ended. So console log end of this function. I think right now in the browser it may be logging it, but eventually this is going to be moved over to an app where it's not the same consideration. So I don't have a full answer for you, I hadn't thought about it, but usually when we log into many sites, remember it asks you in the browser, would you like to save your password? I have not seen that, that pop up here, so perhaps the password is not, I mean the browser is not logging. So I don't have a full confirmation for that, but that'll be something for, for us to look up. I don't know if it is remembering it, simply the browser. But based on that question, we will set up a system for the app itself to remember us in, in a moment. So this, um, this system that we've got logs us in. And if I were to back up to the welcome screen and refresh it, it's in the welcome screen. Um, we right now have to log in every time. If we open the app every time, it'll always take us to the welcome, where I have to select returning user and log in. We'll, we'll set up a system that it will identify you. You've already logged in. You've already been here. And take us directly to the welcome screen. I don't want to keep logging in. I want it to go directly to the welcome screen. Uh, not welcome, to the home screen. The way we'll do that is first we'll set up a way to log out. We've logged into the system on the home screen. I'm logged in. I'm logged in with this user. I want to log out. I want it to take us back to the login screen to log in with a different user. In the home screen, I want to create a button on the top right corner of the app to go to my options screen, to go to a screen where I have various options for the app, and one option is to log out. So if I'm able to go all the way to the home screen, I want to be able to log out. Let's go to your HTML file. And we will add an options button at the top right corner of this home screen. So index HTML in your PG home. Line 82 or so in the PG home. Let's change top here to be the name of the app again. Bottom, remember, is dynamically changed. 
doesn't matter really what's here. It disappears. It changes by the time a person logs in. It says bottom. Um, but there's the name of our app. This is our home screen. CBDB, the name of our app. And the um, icon. I want an icon to appear. The icon will appear to the right of the name of the app. So within the header, I'm going to create an icon. This will be a tag options a tag. It's going to be a button, so it's going to start off as an a tag. href to a page that doesn't exist yet, pg about. We're going to have a screen that focuses on information about the app and options, such as a, a logout option. Data transition, pop. A different sort of animation here, like a pop-up, to get the people's attention. Now many of these data dash somethings are sort of like shortcuts. jQuery Mobile has a bunch of these shortcuts. When we've got data role equals button, it creates a button very easily. That it has round corners, it has a drop shadow, it has all of these features. Sometimes we need to access a version of these jQuery elements in a sort of manual way, using a class. So we could try to use the data role icon and all of that. But this time, I'm going to define the button based on like the primordial aspects of the data role by a class. So if we say ui-btn, this is starting to define the data role button. Space ui-btn-right. Move the button to the right. Uh, move it to the right of this line, space. So there are spaces after each one of these little class names. UI-BTN-ICON-RIGHT. So the button itself will be moved to the right. The icon in the button will be moved to the right. UI-BTN-ICON-NO TEXT. We have text, the word options, but I don't want it to say the word options in that button, so we're nullifying the text. UI-corner-all, give us rounded corners on all of the corners of the button, and then UI-icon-info. Let's use an icon called info. So this is a long way of creating a button. But sometimes we need to do it the long way so we can specify some options that are not a shortcut. We have the data role equals button shortcut. We have the data dash icon equals info. But we don't have some of those data dash something shortcuts for some things we want to do sometimes. Like if we wanted to remove the corners, if we wanted to move it to the right of the screen and such, sometimes we have to use the long hand. This is the long hand. All of that is in the class. This is uh, linking to href to a screen that doesn't exist, pg about. So let's use the template to create a new 
PG about? If you broke that up, like, isn't that like a hinter? Would that mess it up? It depends where. If we break it up right after class, it should be fine. But if we break it up somewhere between each of these statements, it might not work. All right, so let's copy this template again, paste it above itself. Yes? These classes are coming from jQueryMobile.css. They've been defined for us already, and we would go to jQueryMobile.com to look up all possible classes. So, this is a copy of the template, which is now the About page start. The ID needs to be a PG About. Right, if my button is taking us to that screen, then make sure your ID is that. This section also needs something extra. We've got a data role of page, data-dialog, true. Make this screen behave like a dialog box. We saw something like that when we had that basic pop-up. When we, when we created the account, it popped up. It says success. It had a simple basic pop-up. This one is similar to that, although it had, it's going to have more elements, but still data-dialog true. Data role header, data position, that's the same. H1 will say about. The article with its role will be the same. In this case, I'm going to remove completely the footer. We don't need a footer on our pop-up. It's just going to take up space. This pop-up screen will appear. It'll look different than the other screens. It doesn't need a footer. It just takes space. In the article, I'll replace that with a paragraph to say a little bit about the, the app. This is just superfluous for the moment, but might as well fill it in. The comic book database helps you keep track of your collection save your favorite series, including title, issue number, barcode, picture, notes, and more. This is a little bit of information of what the app will be. We're going to be able to save this info when we, get, when we further program the app. Right now we're dealing with login, logout system then it'll be able to do these things. This is when we'll get to the more complex database. Local storage won't work anymore. Local storage only saves a little bit of, of information. I want to save for one comic series the name of it, the issue number of it, the barcode, a picture, notes, all of that, and that's going to get, get us into a more complex database, PouchDB. New paragraph, log out. There's going to be a button here to log out. 
Well, if it's a button, that means it needs the A tag. href for the moment we'll put the pound sign it's not actually going to go anywhere it needs to do something having a pound PG welcome would just take us automatically to the welcome screen I don't want it to do that just yet I need it to do other things I need the JavaScript to detect the user, log out, take us to the right screen. So this is just to make it behave like a button, but it won't actually go anywhere just yet. That'll happen via the JavaScript. It's going to be a button as usual. This time we'll do data inline equals true. Without inline true, the button takes up as much space as the whole screen. It stretches out to the whole screen. Data inline true will only take up as much space as what's in the button, the word logout. Data dash icon. We have to look up the icons, but I think maybe the delete icon. There's no actual like log out looking icon, I think. We can look it up on jQueryMobile.com, but this is going to be a little X. Good enough for the moment, a little X icon, like I'm going to sign out. And then an ID so that via JavaScript I can uh, use the button. BTN log out. The ladies in the back, you're a little distracting. Do you have a question? Because it's a little distracting. Okay. So this is a button that is going to do something, so no href. You can test it if you want. It won't do anything yet, but you'll see that you have to log in, and you'll see the icon at the top, and you click the icon, then you get the pop-up. So again, we'll get to it most likely next time for the automatic detection of you logging in. We'll do the logout part, and then we will do the remembers who you are part. Let's see what mine looks like so far. So if I run this, I'm going to start from the sign up screen, from the welcome screen, and then log in. I'm going to log in with an account that exists. I'm in the home screen. My info icon is right up there. The words options should not appear because of our class. I click on that. Pop up with the pop animation, the text of about, an automatic close button, the text that we wrote, a logout button. Doesn't do anything yet. There's our pop animation, there's our unpop animation. That's happening from line 85, hrfpg about, defining the button, going to the up uh, to the pg about data roll dialog. So that this is not popping up? Right, let me check you one moment. You you just need to confirm that your about has a data dialog of true.
All right, so this log out, uh, for it to fully work, we need to uh, write some JavaScript. So as we're testing it here, I'm in the home screen, I click that, it pops up. This log out will work via JavaScript. That'll be the last thing we do for the day. This won't be that complex. Um, 
If we go back to Notepad, this time the JavaScript. We need to set up something very similar that we've done before. We need to create objects, <coughs> have some sort of event to run a function. So if you go back to your area where you've got these variables, now what we've been doing here is working. Create a variable object, variable object. But a little bit more efficiently, we could be using the same VAR keyword to create multiple variables, which is what we've done, for example, over here. One var keyword we use to create multiple objects. That worked by having a comma at the end of each line until the end of statement. So it's just three bytes. But if we did it the long way, 3, 6, 9, 12, we'd have 12 bytes here. And then we have to change the end of the line. What I'm getting at is that right now we won't quite be able to do that perhaps because we've got the uh, comments in the middle. We could, if you're paying attention, change line 99 from end of statement semicolon to a comma and then define another element. Obviously what I'm saying pay attention, pay attention. If you don't change that semicolon to a comma, what will follow will not work because the error will be, why aren't you saying VAR? I'm not saying VAR because I'm having a comma on the previous line. So that will be LBTN log out, which is, yep, because it's the second letter of the object's name, pound, this time it's lowercase VTN, log out. So there is the HTML element with an ID of BTN log out. We're using that as our object LBTN log out. Semicolon end of statement because we're sort of borrowing the var keyword from before if you have a comma there. Alright, so then if we go into our little block over here of event handlers, l btn logout dot on o n. This is different. O n on. We were previously using dot submit because we were dealing with forms that had a submit button. This is no longer a form. It's a simple button. It's a simple A tag button. So very commonly, we then use on. On the event of something, do something. This one's specific. On the event of submit, do something. This one is a little more generic. On the event of something like a click. So in the parentheses and quotes, click. There's some element on the event of a click or double-click, or drag, or right-click. There are all of these possible events now that we can access. On the event of a right-click, do the following. Very simple. On the event of clicking that button, do something. The syntax is also a little bit different here. Comma, the name of the function, which doesn't exist yet, fn log out. <coughs> it looks a little different too. It's not saying function, event, parentheses. It's just the name of the function. So making notes here. Syntax for submitting a form. Syntax for a simple click on a button. We needed to write a longer version here because a form of form submission has a default behavior, like I said at the beginning of the day, of connecting to a server. So we had to capture those events and then prevent default. Plain old button is a plain old button. And all that we're saying here is on the event of a plain old button click, run a function. No parentheses. 
this is just the way it is. If you add parentheses here, this will run that function right away, even without a click. So no parentheses here. Now it doesn't look like I'm calling a function, but it is. It's a function. This is the syntax. Just something to memorize. So make a note. Note, no parentheses. Form for submitting a, a syntax for submitting a form because we have to prevent default behavior, which was event dot prevent default in the function. That's the reason why the syntax is is this different. So then we need to define a function logout. While we're here, what you could do, maybe adding a comment this way, just for visibility, event handlers. Mm. All of these areas of code here, and we'll be adding more, all of my event handlers will exist in this spot here. I'm going to find them at the end of my code. I have a comment there that's just going to be very obvious as I scroll my code. This is my whole section of event handlers. They will all be in this area. Similarly, I'm probably going to set up a bunch of variables. You know, create a variable, an object, etc. All of my variables will exist in a section. Variable, what's the official way? Variable definition, variable invocation. What's the really fancy, nerdy way of saying that? Any nerds in the house? Variable instantiation. Variable declarations. So all event handlers are happening down there. All variable declarations are happening in that area. find where I've made all my handlers, and I can find where I've made all my declarations of variables. So before all of that, function fn logout, parentheses. This one will not have a an event in the parentheses. I'm not passing any event into it. I'm not doing anything fancy like a button submittal. So I don't have an event in the parentheses. This function won't be that long, but I'll note that this is the end of function logout. To follow what I've done previously, console output noting the beginning and ending of the function. Eventually, as you work on your own projects and uh, program it your, in your own style, you may decide this is way too much, this is too wordy, this is too much verbiage, it's too much in my console. It's perfectly fine. Here, we're making it obvious, especially if we're beginners, to see how it all works behind the scenes. So what logout is going to do, you click the logout button and it'll log you out. It'll take you back to the, um, to the welcome screen. At the moment, it's not so... It's not, it's not so, um, well, at the moment, 
if I'm looking at the welcome screen and I manage to log in, I have the ability to log out by simply pressing back. I have a back and forward button in the browser. But eventually this is not going to be a website. It's going to be a mobile device. So I'm not going to be viewing this project in a web browser where I've got a back button. Android devices do have a back button, but iPhone devices don't. Not every device has some sort of back button. And then, anyway, when we compile this for a real device, we will deactivate the back button. Because technically right now, a person's logged in and they can press back and go to all these screens that they really shouldn't be able to go to anymore. We're going to deactivate the back button when we get to the native code. So it sort of seems like this is a little too much. Log out, I just press back and I log out. No, think in terms of being able to navigate in the app without some sort of back button unless we provide that feature as a developer. So what I want to do here is we're going to do this page changing code like we did for the successful login. Mobile page container dot page container. It's the same syntax that we did for the, the successful login. From the current page, change to PG welcome. PG welcome. That's the very first screen visible when the app loads. <coughs> transition of flip animation. If we don't specify this, the transition will be a fade. You know, that might be fine actually. I'm, I'm not going to put a transition. The default will be a fade transition. That might be a good thing to do to get people's attention. Yeah. Flip is going to be from a normal flipping from screen to screen. But log out is a whole new thing. We've logged out of the <coughs> app to go home, so maybe the default fade transition will catch their attention. All right, so to test this, you want to run it. You want to log into the app, click on that options button, click log out, and that should then take you back to the welcome screen. Can you hear the logout screen? It doesn't, uh, it, it works, but it doesn't behave like you might see other times. In other kinds of apps or websites, does it log you out right away? What's that? Exactly. Asking the question, are you sure you want to log out? So we're going to add that too. That's going to require some if-else questions and then a pop-up message and and all of that. So uh, we'll add that, but I think we'll we'll add that on uh, on Thursday because then we can continue the part about remembering that I've logged in. So we'll we'll end at this point. When we come back on Thursday, we'll complete the the logout with a confirmation. Then we'll set up a system of it remembering you. You've logged in one time. I don't want to have to log in every time I load the app. That'll clean up and finish up the login, log out. And the time that we've spent, this part of the class, part one, is dealing with this login, log out system. Part two, starting next week, is now going to transition us over to what do we need to set up in order to take this over to a real device. Because right now it's just a website. It looks like a mobile project because we're in the browser. 
but starting with part two next week, we're going to compile it to the devices. Um, I'll remind us on Thursday, but next month, next week, is when we're going to remember to bring in a device. If you want to test this on real hardware, you want to bring a mobile device, like an Android device, I've got a, a class of 10 tablets that you can check out if you don't bring a device. But next week, we're going to start with using real devices. We have one more day, Thursday, to learn a little bit more of this login screen.